Well, thank you for the introduction. Um, yeah, I am uh, Aaron Rubesh. My presentation was going to be all over. Um, I just kind of threw the name out there. I figured it fit with what I'm going to present to you guys. Um, I knew I didn't know what I was doing, but now you do. And so the gist of that is basically I learned security the hard way. I got into it um, when I was younger, uh, unknowingly, really. And I just started you know, going through online resources and going through the, the fire hose, like, like was mentioned in the previous prison presentation and really trying to learn everything on my own. And there, there is a lot of information that comes from that. Um, and so I, I told myself if I could ever help anyone else learn security, I hope that they don't have to go through the massive amounts of information like I had to just to get to where they want to go. And I, and I hope that this, this presentation really helps to clear up kind of what it is that you should know getting into security. What are some, what are some, uh, I guess, technical goals that you should try to achieve um, going into your first job or or going into school or just just setting for yourself if you just want to do it as a hobby. You know, what are what are some of those technical goals that you should kind of prepare for um, when you're really trying to get into this stuff? Because it is a lot. Uh, there's a lot of different tracks in security. There's a lot of information to go through. And it, it can be overwhelming to someone. And I, I truly believe that if you have any type of knack for technology, you can do well in cybersecurity. Um, but the thing that scares a lot of people is just the sheer amount of information um, and the stuff that I guess a lot of people expect you to know. If you look at any job applications and stuff out there, you see all of these crazy requirements for everything. And it's that scares a lot of people off when when really you you can get by with with a lot less than what's uh, than what's required. So. Uh, I hope uh, I hope this presentation really serves as a is a good starting point for for someone getting new into security that, that wants to make this their career. Um, and if you if you've been in it for a while, maybe it, maybe it'll serve as a refresher. Maybe it will kind of um, remind you of some of those skills that you kind of put to the side and you didn't pick up on that that you should get back into. So a little bit about me. Um, so currently, I am a software developer. I'm not in a security role per se, um, but I previously was a penetration tester and I worked on an application security team. Uh, I live in Houston. And um, so I guess one of the questions might be is why is this guy talking to me about security if he bailed from security? Um, I didn't bail out of security. I, Whenever I learned security, I also learned programming at the same time. Uh, I taught myself both skills and I I feel like they they really go hand in hand because you wouldn't have the insecure software if you didn't have uh, or you wouldn't have the security vulnerability if you didn't have insecure software. Um, people are a portion of that, but you get the drift. Um, in my in my roles as a uh, as a corporate penetration tester, one of the things I noticed um, was that the tools really suck. Uh, well, I hated the tools. I hated using the tools and. Um, I always thought that that's, that's some place that could be improved greatly. So I looked for a company that was doing security tool development um, and I joined them and now I'm helping build uh, security tools. So still kind of in security, but more of a software dev now. I started off at security really before I really knew what I was doing. Um, I used to play a lot of video games like, like, mo like most kids. Um, and I really wanted to be better than others at those games, but I didn't want to put in the work. So I started developing automation tools, um, cheats, hacks, exploits. Um, I started making brute forcers for some of the games I played to break into other people's accounts, steal all the stuff that they uh, that they worked hard for. Um, yeah, sorry if that ever happened to you. I don't do that stuff anymore. Um, but to do that, I had to learn basically reverse engineering, how to, um, how to debug an application that I didn't have source code for read different variables inside the memory uh, and then call different things um, that I wanted to do or that I wanted to automate. And for brute forcing, it's the same thing as, you know, um, John the Ripper does or uh, other other password crackers and stuff out there. Um, but just developing that from scratch, not really knowing that that's, you know, kind of involved in security. It wasn't until later on when I started college that I actually saw those skills that I was using 
and said, hey, this is actually a pretty decent, um, pretty decent career avenue. And so I, uh, I jumped on that train and um, I got a degree in uh, computer information systems and I focused on security as like a hobby and all the tool sets and stuff on the side and, and that's where I got to where I am today. So, um, yeah, so I basically just want to get into like the skills that I see that are valuable for someone getting into security that I really, in my experience, my, my couple years of experience uh, that I see like my peers in security lacking. Um, it, it's pretty crazy that, um, that a lot of people in, in this field now, um, and I know that there's a, there's a lack of talent, um, but there's a lot of people who, who don't have some of these basic skills and it's, it's, it's sometimes not a tool issue. It's sometimes just a lack of the fundamental knowledge. Um, and, and, and it will lead you to less, you know, false positives and, and better reports and stuff like that. So, uh, the biggest thing that I always tell people to learn when you want to get into security is networking. Um, what is a packet? How does it traverse a network? How does a switch switch the switch the packet to, you know, whatever devices? How does it? How does a router work? How does a firewall work? Um, just basic like network plus CCNA level networking knowledge. Um, it's it's really crucial in this field. Um, you have so many so many exploits and stuff that happen remotely now, or the, all the good ones anyway, are, are ones that you can basically use from a remote perspective that you can used to get into something that you don't have physical access to. And to do that, you need to know how, how you know, those devices are communicating on a network level. What, uh, what type of protocols are being sent? Um, what that looks like whenever you, whenever you take a uh, packet sniffer like Wireshark, TCP dump, something like that, and you export the, the, the PCAP and, you, and you're reading it, you know, what, is that, what does that information mean? And then how can you edit that information to get it to do what you, do what you want? You take some of the some of the network level exploits out there right now um, that are just you know uh, basically at the protocol level you know editing different fields in, in, a, in a specific protocol that, that's going to make something some device on the other end communicate ineffectively or, or cause an exploit and you you learn how to build that stuff yourself. So. Really, you know, how to read a PCAP is crucial, what the network devices do, and then how do, how do they do them? Um, how does the operating system uh, do networking? How does your Linux machine route packets? How does it assign IP addresses to different interfaces? How does, uh, how does the IP tables firewall work? Um, if you've used something like PFSense before, how does that stuff, how does the, uh, the packet filter um, in BSD work? Um, and really, um, the best way to learn this stuff is to, you know, try to build your own router. You can do that with just a, uh, you could set up a Linux virtual machine, um, set up a couple other virtual machines with it, and you could build your own network, turn on IP forwarding, um, and throw some IP table rules in there, and you can actually have a, uh, a functional router that you built yourself and without really needing something else. Really getting into this stuff, and actually playing around with it, you're, you're going to learn a lot and it's going to make you a better, um, a better penetration test or better uh, blue team if you, if that's what you want to go into, better purple team player. Um, it's really going to, really going to make you stand out more when you, when you're able to analyze this information and, and really know what's going on. The uh, second, second skill set is, is operating systems. Um, Really, you need to learn how to effectively use Windows, Linux, and Mac. Um, I used to just completely bash on Windows wherever it, uh, wherever I saw it. Um, I never, I never liked using it. I, I just hated it. But really, once you, once you really get into it, you know, Windows is everywhere, and it's something that you need to learn how to use effectively. You need to learn how to do the things that you want to do in Windows because you're not going to escape it. And you really need to turn that into something that you could take advantage of. So um, by doing that, you know, you can more effectively discover exploits on your own. 
you can more effectively execute exploits um, and execute uh, different penetration tests and um, assessments and stuff like that. So uh, along with those skill sets, you want to learn how to like troubleshoot and inspect the operating systems you're working on. So just figuring out, okay, what type of processes are running on this machine? What type of services are running on this machine? Um, what type of uh, what type of applications are listening on different ports? You know, when you when you when you run like an nmap scan on a a networked device, you're used to just you know tossing a couple flags in, into an nmap um, into nmap and then running it on a uh, running it against the machine and then seeing what what ports are open, what what it thinks is there, right? But how do you do that from from the inside, right? If you're already on the machine, you want to see hey maybe something's listening on something that uh, I didn't pick up from externally. What what may be listening here that I can that I can find that I can maybe take advantage of? Um, how do you find what tools are available? Maybe you are on a machine and you're trying to find a way to pivot somewhere else. How do you do that without knowing what's available to you on the machine you're working on? Um, maybe you have a C compiler installed. Maybe you only have Bash available. Maybe you have Python installed. Um, what can you utilize to help get you to the next machine that you actually want to get to? Um, and that's really the only, the, there's multiple ways to, to learn this stuff. Um, you can go for like an A plus cert or something like that or read through those books, but really it's going to require you to just install some virtual machines um, or install it on physical hardware if you want and just get into it and just start playing around with the stuff and really and really learning how all of the stuff works you know set a goal for yourself say hey i want to set up a vulnerable web server and you learn how to create a web server or, on linux or maybe windows and you host a vulnerable one or maybe you um add some like known exploit exploitable configurations of that stuff and you you set that stuff up on your own um to to figure out really how how the whole process of uh, of that works. Um, third skill that uh, that I see really um, a lot of people lacking is just a general programming sense of programming knowledge. A lot of people want to come to security that they and, and they don't really want want to program that much. They want to run some tools, um, run some uh, they want to run some scripts and just analyze some output, and that's fine. Um, if you want to do that, but if you, but I feel like if you really want to want to learn, you know what you're doing, um, learning some programming is is going to be crucial to that. Um, I always say learn C and then learn something like Ruby or Python, and that's because everything's built on top of C. Um, operating system kernels are built on C. Um, most of your tools on Linux are built in C. Most of your tools on Windows are probably built in .NET now, but a lot of them were built in C. Um, and really everything you want to do on an operating system, on any operating system, you can interface it through C. If you want to build a packet sniffer, you want to create your own packets to send across the network, you can do that in C. Yeah, you can, yeah, there's Python libraries and stuff available for that as well, but you have everything available to you already if you're using C. Um, by doing that, you know, you gain a you gain a deeper understanding of how you know other applications on the operating system are actually using those libraries as well. Whenever you whenever you kind of learn the low level programming, the system level programming like that, and you understand kind of the Linux APIs and the Windows APIs, you understand that how how other applications out there are always going to be using the same function calls that um that you would be using if if you wanted to write a program that did something similar, right? And and you can use that to your advantage. You know that an application that's communicating uh, to the internet or to some other network device is going to have to create a socket. It's going to have to then send bytes across that. So by knowing that, you can you can understand that um, that if you go in and you actually look for where it's calling those functions, you can actually see, okay, hey, this is what data it's sending. This is how it's sending data. Um, maybe if I can intercept that or rewrite what it's uh, rewrite it, what it's sending, I could discover a new exploit, or I can um, I can figure out another way uh, to get it to do what I want. Um, it's things like that that you that you start to understand that that software is really 
um, it really is what what you make it to be. And even if someone else made it, you can still do what you want with it if it's on your machine. Um, and this is um, and this this leads to a more easily more easy transition into like reverse engineering if if that's what you want to do. Um, preferably, that's that's the stuff I enjoy: uh, debugging applications, finding my own exploits. Um, and doing stuff like that is is, um, is kind of what what I'm mostly interested in, and that's that's where I think uh, you know the low-level programming stuff really helps that because you're actually able to analyze what those uh, what those functions are and what they're doing in that application. Physical networking, um, and not like you know just cabling up stuff, but actually growing your community. Um, whenever you have a stronger community and a larger community of people who you can reach out to. You're going to just you're going to have a better baseline of knowledge to begin with because you have people who you can more easily ask questions to that can tell you either yes you're doing this the right way or yes you're doing this wrong way or you're, or you're looking at this the wrong way. Um, they can help you uh, get out of the weeds with a uh, uh, with an issue that you may be you know uh, wrapped around into too much that's not really going to um, to get you anywhere faster than you would have done it on your own. Um, I like to say it's it's good job security um, and not in a sense that, hey, you're going to stay at your current job for, for, a, for a good long time, but it's better job security and knowing that you have people looking out for you. I can't uh, almost, I mean, it's gotta be every day. You know, you, you see on Twitter, um, in security Twitter anyway, that, um, you know, someone's saying, hey, I. I lost my job, here's a resume, and then you see, you know, 30 minutes to an hour later, people helping them out and having four to five job offers in, in a day. I mean, it's stuff like that that's really, uh, that, that you get from having a good community that you don't get otherwise. Um, and I learned this, you know, in the past couple of years a lot better than I did before because I was always kind of the guy that wanted to take everything solo. I always wanted to figure it out on my own. and really try and just do it do it myself i always wanted to figure it out on my own um and never and never really take help from others um and i've had to uh, i've had to struggle against you know thinking that way and get out of that mindset and really embrace um having a larger community and um really communicating better with others and contributing back um to communities um invest in the education of others you know don't just if you see someone asking for um, for help with someone, or they, or someone wants um, wants some assistance doing something. Don't don't think that it's oh that's uh, that's too easy for for me to really care about. Someone else will help them, you know. Or maybe um, maybe you're afraid of being wrong um, when you're trying to help someone. Um, or you see someone just struggling with a with a certain topic in it that you know a little bit more about. Um, you know, just take five ten minutes out of your day to just help someone out. Uh, help help at least lead them to the right path um, and not just and not just ignore it. Uh, it's going to make you feel a little better about yourself and it's going to help the community um, as a whole because um, we're all we're all a community. We're all we're all in this together. We're not we're not fighting against each other or anything. Um, you know, the more the more people we have investing back into into the education of others, um, the better and more uh, more knowledgeable our community will be as a whole. Um, Reiterating on what was said in the in the previous uh, presentation as well, you know, attend attend more conferences, attend local ones if you have uh, B sides locally. Um, unfortunately, the Houston one isn't that great, I don't think. <laughs> um, but uh, but you know, attend attend on a couple uh, you know a couple cities away. You know, fly out of state and go to a different uh, go to a different conference. Um, go to a, go to some of the larger ones. Go to small ones. Um, you know, just just find other. Find find ways to go out and, and meet some people. You never know who who you're gonna meet, um, and uh, and what type of knowledge they're gonna have, and what what type of uh, what type of opportunities that, that it might present you. Um, another school skill set I, I like to uh, I like to add in here is don't just learn a tool. Learn how to learn how it works. Don't just you know get on a Windows machine and run Mimikast, whatever you want to do to try and get some passwords. Right. Learn how that tool is actually doing what it's doing um, because chances are that whenever a tool like that gets fixed 
there's going to be some code changes around where that where that tool is hitting. And if you know that code is changing in a certain area, you can also use that to your advantage of finding ways to get around what was changed. And by knowing what what kind of type of areas of an application you're already targeting, uh, it kind of reduces the time it's going to take for for like a new exploit to come to come about or a new way of uh, or a new way of um, of executing and getting the same functionality is, is gonna is gonna come about. So um, you're going to uh, you're also going to discover a lot more ways of um, of doing the same thing. Um, I like to say you know uh, whenever I wanted to get into like Wi-Fi hacking and man in the middleing, right? Um, everyone just says, okay, go go buy like the pineapple, right? But you don't really need that. You can do that with just a Raspberry Pi and a uh, a Wi-Fi adapter. Um, you can do um, all of that you're on your own just by learning how the tools actually work um, and making you know a more reliable product or making something that you know you can rely on your own for instead of having to rely on you know a specific piece of software or hardware. It will also allow you to um, to contribute back to other tools. So maybe there is a tool that that's really popular that you like using or one that's just you know that's not very popular that's uh, that you like lose using and you want to help them out and you want to contribute something that you found with it, you know, you can contribute back uh, to that tool and, and make it better, which is going to then go back to um, making our community a more knowledgeable, um, more knowledgeable community. Um, and so a lot of, uh, a lot of people also ask me, you know, how do you get all the hands-on experience? Um, how do you go get the first job that's, you know, saying, hey, I want you to have uh, you know, five years of Splunk experience and um, and uh, you know knowledge of firewall systems and um, and different IDS IPSs and how to write you know the most intense uh, you know, snort filters and stuff like that. So um, you really it it sucks that that employers would ask a newcomer um, to have such experience. But that's that's really unfortunately the the place we're in right now. Um, and really, I'm not saying you don't stand a chance if you don't try to create that hands-on experience yourself. Um, but it will make it more likely that you'll you'll get an opportunity from someone like that. Um, and there are some great there are some great employers out there that actually invest in your education and um, and uh, don't care that if you that you know everything off the start. But there's also a lot of crappy ones out there that are going to want you to have that. And it just, in my opinion, um, if you're not kind of the person that's 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 going to rely on just the employer being a good person, um, really, you know, it doesn't hurt to go out and create your own hands-on experience. And in fact, it's going to make you a better, more knowledgeable um, security expert uh, by doing so. So. I always tell I always tell people you know build out a build out a full scale VM network like act like you have a production environment that has a you know a database server a web server a couple application servers maybe an email server um, you can build that all out in VMs now on modern hardware and just try to just try to attack just try to attack it and see see what you can find um, see what you learn in the process of just setting all that up it's gonna make you it's gonna make you a lot better just just by going through that process. Um, launch attacks on networks um, that launch attacks on like your built out networks anyway uh, that that really allow you to not not have to just hit a vulnerable machine so maybe you were used to doing like CTFs like hack the box or doing uh, the vuln hub vulner vulnerable machines or something like that and you are used to just spinning that stuff up and launching an attack at it and just going crazy maybe try putting a firewall or something in, in between that, or maybe try putting an IDS uh, between that so that whenever you're trying to attack those things, you're not just going straight for the vulnerable machine. You're trying to get past other obstacles along the way. Um, and the reason I say that is because 99% of the time, it's never going to be as easy as it is, is in, a, in a CTF um, or, uh, or any of the other challenges um, out there like that. Um, there's 
always going to be some type of security control. Well, not always. There's some places that don't have it, but it more just expect there to always be some type of security controls in the way blocking your blocking you from doing you know the exploits you want. A lot of people come in here thinking, you know, I all I have to do is run these these couple of scripts. Um, I'm going to then be able to uh, be able to you know exfil some passwords and then and then I'm going to be able to pivot on to the next one. And you're not because you're going to have an entire army of devices actually blocking you from doing what you expect. And that that throws a lot of people off um, because they're not used to dealing with that. So actually spin that stuff up. You're on your own and, and practice it. And then, you know, a great way to test if you know how to harden systems and, and harden your networks. Uh, something that I did a couple times, throw out like a uh, a open uh, FTP server on the internet and just you know, see what hits it, see how long it takes for malware to get dropped on it. Um, then try to add like some security controls to that and see if you can harden it further and keep prevent that stuff from hitting it. Um, do the same for like a web server. Have some, you know, database set up and just putting it on the internet is a surefire way of having someone scanning you and someone trying to hit you within probably 20 minutes. Um, I think it's the longest I've gone of putting something online and not having anyone hit it yet is probably about 20 minutes. So um, do it in uh, find a find a cheap cloud hosting provider and you know spin up a five dollar droplet somewhere and spin up a server and just see how long you can go with uh, uh, without getting hit or um, then trying to make improvements to that and and try to uh, prevent that from happening. So.